And Mr. Madam President, I rise today to talk about uh, the tax hikes uh, that are going to be hitting the middle class families all across this country, and that it's going to do so in, in a way that many Americans do not realize. Um, everyone in Washington is talking about the fiscal cliff and the tax increases that, uh, that might come from that. Uh, but today I want to talk about something different, and those are the tax increases that are coming regardless of what happens with a fiscal cliff. And those are the tax hikes that we're seeing because of President Obama's health care law. People who have been following this closely know that President Obama's health care law guarantees that middle class families will pay higher taxes. The President promised repeatedly that he would not raise taxes on the middle class. As a matter of fact, he said, quote, if you're a family making less than $250,000 a year, uh, he's referring to his health care plan, he said, my plan won't raise your taxes one penny. He went on to say, not your income taxes, not your payroll taxes, not your capital gains taxes, not any of your taxes. That's what the President said. But once he got into office, President Obama arranged for his health care plan to be written behind closed doors. Democrats in Congress passed it, and they did it strictly along party lines. This law has included more than 20 different tax increases. These tax increases amount to more than a trillion dollars over the next 10 years. Of those, a dozen taxes specifically targeted middle class taxpayers. The most famous, of course, is the individual mandate tax. That's the one that requires all Americans buy a government-approved health insurance plan. If they don't, for even one single month out of the year, then they have to pay the tax. Members of the Senate ought to remember this one. This is the one that the American public still finds very unfavorable to the point that still a majority of the Americans want to either change or completely eliminate and repeal the President's health care law. The law continues to be very unpopular. And one of the main reasons has to do with this tax. It is the tax that's going to hit families harder than single people. And it's going to hit the middle class harder than wealthier Americans. And you know what? That's the way it was designed. Amazingly, that's the way the Democrats in this body designed the tax, to hit the middle class harder than wealthier Americans. By 2016, 4.7 million low- and middle-income households will face a tax for not buying government-approved health insurance. It was entirely predictable. In fact, a lot of us on the Republican side of the aisle did predict it right here on the floor of the Senate. Well, this leads me to another aspect of the health care law that the White House and the Democrats have not been eager to talk about, and it's the role specifically related to this tax, and that's the role of the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service. The law gives the IRS unprecedented new powers to do what? To probe into taxpayers' lives. Right after the election, and they waited till after the election, the Obama administration started releasing a wave of new health care regulations. These include new rules on how the IRS plans to implement the new health care taxes. Just last week, they put out proposed rules on how they're going to enforce the new Medicare payroll taxes. They still haven't said exactly how they plan to enforce the individual mandate tax. But we do know, we do know that IRS agents are going to be verifying who bought health insurance and taxing everyone who didn't. We know the IRS will be doing more tax audits for health care spending. We know the IRS will be able to confiscate, confiscate Americans' tax returns. Why? Well, to pay for health care taxes. Not to pay for health care, but to pay for health care taxes and to assess interest and late fees on people without insurance. We know we're going to see an army of new IRS agents and auditors to do what? To investigate the health insurance choices of Americans and their families. 
the agency is going to have to collect a huge amount of data, not just from insurance companies, but from the American people. The IRS is going to want to know details, like the costs and the benefit structure of every person's health insurance policy. They're going to want to know who in each household is covered and how long they've been covered. They'll want to know the income that people have reported to their insurance company and what other kind of coverage their employer may have offered. To get all this information, the Internal Revenue Service will have to develop new layers, additional layers of red tape for businesses and for families, new forms, new filing procedures, and new instructions. And it's going to have to come up with some way for taxpayers to resolve any discrepancies. And there are going to be a lot between what their tax returns may say and the data that the insurance companies report. It is going to be a nightmare. It's not clear how the IRS is going to do this, but people are certainly going to need to keep very careful records. It's also clear that a lot of Americans are going to be defending themselves against audits. All of that is work the IRS is going to have to do just to get ready for this massive amount of new bureaucracy. Problem is, several independent reviews have found the agency is seriously unprepared. In one, the Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration found that the IRS is not equipped not equipped to implement the law contained in what is called, quote, the largest set of tax law changes in more than 20 years. The IRS hasn't even conducted a thorough review of the law that it is required to execute. As a result, the Inspector General's office said it wasn't able to determine whether the IRS had adequately planned for the workforce that they'll need. Now, there were separate analysis done. There was an analysis done by the House of Representatives. They found the IRS could need more than 16,000 new IRS agents, new IRS examiners, new IRS support employees. Well, you know as well as I, the American taxpayers will get hit with the bill to pay for the salaries of all of those new IRS employees the agents, the examiners, and the support employees. The American people knew what they wanted from health care reform. What they asked for was the care they need from a doctor they choose at lower cost. That's what President and, and Democrats promised them. Turns out what the American public has gotten is less choice, more regulations, and higher taxes. And in meeting after meeting, when I visit with constituents at home in Wyoming, Say, how many of you believe under the President's health care law you're going to pay more for your health insurance? All the hands go up. And say, how many of you think that the quality and availability of your care because of the President's health care law is going to go down? It's going to get worse? Again, all the hands go up. Now, what these same people are learning is that the IRS is the chief federal enforcer for key parts of President Obama's health care law and the people of my state and the people around the country do not like it at all. What we're going to have as a result of the health care law is a much larger internal revenue service. They're going to have broad new powers, powers to investigate, powers to monitor, and powers to tax the American people. At the same time, there's real doubt about whether the agency is even up to the job. America's middle class families don't want don't need, and cannot afford more taxes. They don't want, they don't need, and they cannot afford a more powerful Internal Revenue Service with more agents looking into the details of their health care choices. But that is exactly what President Obama and every Democrat in this body has given to the American people. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor and suggest the absence of a quorum.